Welcome to the final edition of Sports Central for 2016. Today we're going to give you a little bit of a picture, play, preview into the NFL uh, playoff picture and then talk about some bowl games that are coming up over the break. Uh, so, Clark, I'm going to start us off with the uh, NFL playoff picture after yesterday. Some big uh, things yeah. happened. As the regular season's winding down, you see some teams are on top and some teams are still fighting for that spot. I think an interesting place to look is at the Tennessee Titans and also at uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Both teams have young quarterbacks that have really turned their I mean, systems around. You look at Marcus Mariota and uh, Jameis Winston. Both are young guys who, I mean, they went to a team that has had very little success in the past, and both are fighting for that playoff spot. Tennessee on the top of um, the AFC South, and the Buccaneers still looking for that wild card spot. So. I've been very impressed with both of those guys. Yeah, I'd say uh, Tennessee Titans, Mark Merida gained a little bit of my respect after this last Sunday. I mean, that's a rough Chiefs loss. Chiefs, Chiefs, they, they the Chiefs really deserve City. respect, though. The Chiefs well, one deserve of them. to like. Well, I mean, they choked. Well, the Chiefs, Chiefs yeah. went into ch typical Chiefs mode. They got an early lead. They played really well. They got two quick scores. Went up 14-0, and then they went into coast mode. They had a couple, they had a goal line stand where they got or they were on they were on offense towards the goal line, but second and goal from the three. They go out at, they go out at the half yard line. On a toss, it should have been a touchdown. Anthony Thompson's in the ball. Turns into a third and inches from the goal line. We don't get it. Andy Reid elects to go for it. We don't get it. They stop us. Next drive, Alex Smith marks slowly down the field on the five, second and goal from the five. He throws an interception in the end zone. So. I mean, then you just you just can't do that. I mean, just little You're things. Just keeping them in the game. Yeah. Like but good, good teams need to need to shut them down when they can. can. Yeah. Yeah. But don't where, let them hang around. Where I was coming with the respect then was towards the end of the game. I mean, it was into that game. Marcus Mariota, Marcus Mariota had no timeouts, one minute to get in field goal range in a cold weather day. I mean, and he barely got in field goal range. But I mean, he he marched 45 just yards with no timeouts. I mean, I mean, just barely in field goal range. Just barely. If only Dan Bailey could have made a field goal like that in the cold. Oh yeah. Yeah. So now we'll, we'll kind of shift over to some of the major bowl games. Uh, one really interesting matchup that's not in like the power or the group of six bowls or what they call them, I guess nowadays, is that Louisville uh, LSU game. I mean, that, those are two teams that I mean, LSU had sky high preseason <coughs> expectations, kind of had. Floundered off, and then Louisville. I mean, kind of was a surprise at early in the season, and then really struggled towards the end of the year. Where LSU kind of resurged at the end of the year. What, what do you think is going to happen in that uh, LSU Louisville game? Well, the first thing I want to bring up with that game is the whole Leonard Fournette situation. I don't like it at all. I think that is the biggest pansy move he could have ever done. Getting ready for the NFL draft and sitting out of your last college football game. They are seven and four. Well, it's not like they're playing yeah, you for can't the road sit out of that. Especially early in the year. Remember game. early in the year, but what was it what, three or four weeks ago? They're out there warming up. They get a little, they get a little fight in pregame, and he wasn't even supposed to play. And they get a little fight pregame. He gets ticked off. He acts like he's going to play on a hurt leg. He comes out there and starts playing. I mean, after that, I was like, oh, okay, he actually cares about his university a little bit. And after this, I mean, we see this. I'm still salty back from Joel Embiid days at KU. Gets a little nick. He doesn't want to. Repeat. But what do you expect out of guy? I mean, they're not getting paid to play in college, and they have an opportunity to go make millions of dollars in their professional sporting. Yeah, but what's he pulling out that, of this? What's he getting out of this? He's getting he's not, ready, risk, not risking ready. injury. He's he's not risking injury. Bullcrap. But he, he's, he's, he's obviously he just he, he just got injured. Like you were talking about, how he had he's had it's kind of <laughs> gimpy leg, yeah. and now he's just. I, I think, you know, finish your career. I, think think it, I don't think it's the right choice, but I understand what he's thinking. I mean, and I especially understand it considering the season that LSU had. I mean, that'd be a terrible move, obviously. Especially with where they've been in yeah, the past. It's yeah. definitely been a, a low end of where they usually are. Okay, so now we're going to look at one of the uh, group of six bowls that's kind of interesting. How about Western Michigan and Wisconsin? 13-0 and Western Michigan. Like, how do you, what, what do you really know about a team that goes 13-0 and in the MAC? you know? I mean, are, are they you legit? Don't, or are they, you don't think it. No, I'm saying you don't know much. I mean, I think this game is going to be a huge test to their whole program. And I really believe if they can pull this one out and then somehow find a way to repeat that success next year, that's going to prove a lot to the, uh, committee. the committee. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I know I really do because I think right now they're like, okay, 13-0, like obviously you can't just forget about that. Mm -hmm. Like that's respectable. But when you're not playing competition, I mean, it's just really hard to – well, it's kind of like the same situation with Houston last year. They got that win over Florida State, and people thought, well, if they can do what they did last year again, they got a really good chance to maybe make it to the playoff. I mean, obviously they didn't do their part of the end this year, but, I mean, I think that's kind of what 
the situation is looking like is that for a group of five team to make the playoff, not only are they going to have to have a good year once, they're going to probably have to have a couple of good years. You're going to prove yourself over the, yeah, years. Yeah, that way to, it's not just a one-year fluke yeah, type of thing. Yeah. No, but in that game, I, I'd also actually Western Michigan pull that game out. I think it'd Do be you think they before. will? I don't know. I don't – I just – I haven't seen a whole lot about them. I mean, I haven't seen a whole lot of their games. Obviously, I know they they win. They find ways to win. I just uh, it'll be interesting to see. Be they got some to talented players. Corey Davis is a he's a receiver for them. Was a first team All American. So I mean, it, it, I think they I think they're gonna win. I honestly yeah. do. That's that's I think they're gonna surprise some people. It should be a fun game to watch. Um, now let's just run through the playoff. Who you got in Washington and Alabama? I mean, you can't go against Alabama, Nick Saban. I mean, you can't. You yeah. can't not. I'm a Washington fan, so I, I think they're going to give them a game. I really do. I think at least for a half they're going to give them a game. I think Washington skill players are as good as Alabama skill players. I really do. John Ross and um, Dante Pettis are like combined for the most receiving touchdowns in the country out of any duo. And then I think Jake Browning's every bit as good as uh, – Jalen Hurt I and mean, Jake Brown. I've watched a lot of Washington games. I also watched a lot of Alabama games. But I just think the fact of the matter is you get to that fourth quarter and that Alabama O line is just going to roll over the Washington D line. I think that's where the game's going to be won is that Washington's just not going to be able to compete in the trenches for four quarters. Yeah. So, um, Going to Ohio State and Clemson, what do you guys think of that one? That should be an interesting game. I mean, both are talented teams that are going to fight through the whole thing. But, I mean, it's, who's going to bring their day? Who's going who's gonna to bring their stuff, you know? You're going to have to do something to knock off the other team and not just go through the motions, you know? Clemson wins that football game. Oh, I just I think Ohio State is a very talented football team. And I also think if any team's going to beat Alabama, it's going to be Ohio State. I just That's your pick? If somebody's going to beat them? Yes, yes. I, I think Alabama's going to win it all because I think Alabama is tremendously just more talented than everyone else. But I, I would love to see Ohio State and Alabama rematch from the first playoff two years ago. But, I mean, it, it, Clemson kind of gave them a game last year in the na national championship. It'll be, it'll be an interesting playoff. Do we all agree that Alabama's probably going to win the national championship, though? It's I don't gonna think take. you can disagree. Yeah, yeah I, don't, I, I agree. I mean, so, anything can happen, but, I mean, it's just Yeah, they're, they're, they're the heavy, heavy favorite by far. Okay, yeah. now we're going to give you a little taste of the one-minute drill with Evan Byers. Hi, I'm Evan Byers, host of the one-minute drill, and today I'm going to be talking about fantasy football. So let's take a look at each position. Aaron Rodgers is number one at the quarterback position, averaging 21.8 points per game. That's pretty solid, but you know, it's been not a great year for quarterbacks as a whole. David Johnson has 19.9 .9 points per game. That is just absolutely ridiculous. Then you got A.B. Antonio Brown, the, the Steelers menace, averaging 13.3 points per game. Then you got Kelsey averaging 8.2 points per game. The tight end position has been pretty weak this year as well. Vikings D, a real shocker, really. They only have 11.1 .1 points per game, which is, you know, it's solid, but preseason, I would have never thought that they would have been that great, even as a Vikings fan myself. Justin Tucker's averaging 11 points per game as a kicker. Not bad. So now let's talk about some players that are on the rise and decline. We got Bilal Powell on the rise. You know, he's had some good weeks. Matt Forte, he's seen less carries, and I think Blal is going to be a great asset. Mike Evans going 5-4-5 five, five in his last three weeks. I think his stock has definitely gone down. Melvin Gordon's stock has gone down, but I think it will, it's a good trade because he will be back. I mean, I would say that was one of Byers' better performances. All it did was read off stats, which, I mean, we could have brought in, like, a second grader to do that. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, he... He only had one. Hey, I chuckle. talked about the rises and falls. He had one yeah. chuckle in there. He called Antonio Brown A B. I don't think I've ever heard anyone do <laughs> Everyone that. Everyone calls him A B. The menace. He also <laughs> the, the, the menace of the Steelers. But I, I would give him a B plus. Still, still not. Come on, it's finals week. Give me a half. <laughs> <laughs> but buyers will get in all your other classes. You can take a B here. <laughs> Any other opinions on his grade or how he did? I don't know. I mean, he's just said ball pal. The only reason he's any good is because Matt Forte went out. Ball yeah. pal got a few carries now. By our I mean, so I will say Matt he's Forte did play okay. on Saturday versus the Dolphins. Yeah, got some okay. carries. Ball pal was the RB1. Well, you're right. I mean, he got a couple carries because he's coming back from an injury. I mean, I think Bilal Powell is the future of the Jets' running game. Glad you know a lot about the Jets. Right? <laughs> Glad you're an expert. About well, the Jets. thanks for watching. Everyone have a Merry Christmas. We'll see you in 2017.